From dust, he brought about beauty. He'd hewn the human form, perfect and priceless, but breathless and lifeless. So God leaned in quite close, and thus, into this dust, he breathed life. Good afternoon, everybody. This is the podcast that I had announced uh, I would be presenting with respect to uh, the transgender movement of self-identification. I should warn you that it's going to be very controversial. Some people might find it very offensive, but the research that was conducted and the proof that will be presented from very reliable sources will conclusively validate the information in this podcast. So if, um, if you feel that you're going to find it offensive, if you feel that it's going to be hate speech or misinformation, I suggest that you move on to another podcast and avoid this one at all costs. Thank you. One, despite what you often hear, scientific evidence shows people are not born trapped in the body of the wrong sex. If transgenderism were biological, then studies of identical twins should prove that. But instead, they show just the opposite. Nowadays, there is a need for LBGTQ groups to push the acceptance of multiple genders or multiple sexual orientations in this country. Their battle is clear. The legitimization of their ideology to become the norm by all and any means necessary in this country and abroad even if it means convincing the government to ram it down our throats through laws and fines or by the cancel culture identifying those opposed as bigots, homophobes, and discriminators. The House passed a landmark Equality Act banning discrimination based on sexual orientation and gender identity. But However, this movement is a forced norm, and non-acceptance comes at a cost if you disagree with their beliefs. Again, if you are part of the percentage that disagrees this is normal or that denial of this preconception is your stand, your opposition could be considered hate speech or discriminatory. Hate speech in that an individual or group with supporting beliefs the existence of male and females as the only existing genders. Discrimination in terms that if you don't accept or recognize their notion, is discriminatory, like back in the 60s, when blacks were discriminated against, not recognized as citizens or permitted to live among whites. However, according to LBGTQ movement, this is progress in their advancement of gender equality. Progress in which transgenders can participate in politics, marriage, sports, in an attempt to validate their ideology. According to an article called Transgender History in the U.S. and Places That Matter by Susan Stryker, the word transgender first appeared in print in American English in 1965 and entered widespread use only in the 1990s. Thus, it might seem to name a relatively recent phenomenon without much of a history, one that has a scant time to leave many traces in built environment or inhabited landscape. In most respects, transgender is just today's term for referring to the way people can live lives that depart from the conventional patterns according to which all bodies are assigned a sex at birth, male or female. Number two. After passing through puberty, the majority of young children who originally expressed distress and confusion about their biological sex outgrew it. We're talking 75 to 95 percent of such children. The reality is the LBGTQ and transgender movements is forced acceptance of immoral behavior and a society dealing with a mental problem by ignoring it and giving it a legal status through the courts, marches, petitions, and organizations with the same beliefs. Throughout history, this behavior was looked down upon, berated, even resulted in death for many because it was a deviation of the natural order of the human species, in which males, females through a natural attraction would reproduce to have offspring. But same-sex partnerships 
cannot through natural law reproduce or replenish the human species. This deviation of the natural order is a sexualized preference rather than a natural predisposition of the truth that only two genders exist within the human species. God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. The so-called phenomenon, transgenderism, has been a cover-up for what psychiatrists have termed a mental illness, or now referred to as a condition. A condition that for decades received treatment unlike any of several mental conditions. But the LBGTQ advocates would argue treatment should be considered discriminatory because it would argue there is no mental issue, just an identity crisis. Yet it was the feminists that pushed hard for the change in societal thinking. According to an article written by Corinne Gotti in January 2018 in the Christian Post, first wave feminism was a campaign to liberate women from an overly restrictive concept of gender so they could be free to fulfill their nature. But it gave way to a movement seeking to make women identical to men. From the era of inflexible sex stereotypes, our culture swung to the opposite era of denying any important differences between males and females. The result is a culture of androgyny and confusion. An agenda of nullifying the distinction between men and women might seem opposed to the insistence on the absolute reality of transgender identity, i.e., an inner sense of being truly male or female, yet both start by severing gender from biological sex. There are even groups that contend babies should be recognized as babies versus a boy or a girl until the babies can choose their gender. The ridiculousness of gender identity is a serious concern and should be. Well, it's not about pretending. The parent definitely knows the gender. It's about not necessarily labeling the baby. It's about allowing the baby to decide what gender that baby wants to be when that baby can decide, which is around four years old. For, so from zero to four, the baby will not be labeled. The labeling theory will not apply from zero to four years old. The baby will be a baby, neither a boy nor a girl. Number three. Medical treatments often used to treat children with gender dysphoria have not been proven safe. Serious questions remain, including whether such treatments may cause obesity and testicular cancer in males and decrease bone and muscle growth and infertility in both sexes. No rigorous scientific studies exist to show the long-term physical or psychological effects of puberty blockers and cross-sex hormone treatments on normally developing children. This brings up another known term called gender identity disorder, or the new term, gender dysphoria. What is gender dysphoria? According to the Mayo Clinic, gender dysphoria is a diagnosis listed in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, DSM-5, a manual published by the American Psychiatric Association to diagnose mental conditions. This term is intended to be more descriptive than the one that was previously used, gender identity disorder. The term gender dysphoria focuses on one's discomfort as the problem, rather than identity. It is a mental disorder by definition. According to the American Psychiatric Association, mental illnesses are health conditions involving changes in emotions, thinking, or behavior or a combination of these. Mental illnesses are associated with distress and or problems functioning in social, work, or family activities. It is safe to state a transgender person was not born with this condition, but learned or developed it as a result of the individual suffering from an emotional and mental identity crisis. A lack of loving oneself in terms of physical appearance, assigned sex at birth, or difficulty identifying with their gender. This condition could be brought on for many reasons, such as the home environment, sexual abuse,
peer pressure, and gender or social affirmation, or their association with friends sharing the same condition. Maybe all the above. Furthermore, the term was used to query the validity of the norms. It was also used to carry on equivalent rights and anti-discrimination legislation. These lead to extensive practice in the media, academic world, as well as law. In 1973, an argument was one which recategorized homosexuality from a disease to a condition by the American Psychiatric Association. However, the American Psychiatric Association defines a transgender in this way. The term transgender refers to a person whose sex assigned at birth, i.e. the sex assigned by a physician at birth, usually based on external genitalia, does not match their gender identity, i.e. one's psychological sense of their gender. Some people who are transgender will experience gender dysphoria, which refers to psychological distress that results from an incongruence between one's sex assigned at birth and one's gender identity. Though gender dysphoria often begins in childhood, some people may not experience it until after puberty or much later. But the fact is, this is how a newborn is distinguished from birth, male or female, not transgender or homosexual, because the sex is assigned by the physician at birth, confirmation upon glancing at the genitalia at birth. So any critical thinker will agree there are two sexes, not three. If there were, it would be scientifically confirmed. However, in terms of the biblical definition, God made man in his likeness, and from the rib of Adam was Eve created as his partner. Accordingly, only two sexes were created by God in the form of Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve, Adam and Eve, not Amy and Eve, Adam and Eve. And this ends the argument that nature, from the scientific perspective, or God, made two sexes. Now, I know this will offend the gay and transgender community, parents, and politicians, but you can't change this fact. There are two sexes, male and female. There is no in-between. There is only an emotional disconnection with the identity of the person whose condition is gender dysphoria. This isn't hate speech. This is truth speech. What a person decides in his or her life or sexual orientation comes after knowing the beginning of their life. It's a personal choice, not a defect in the X or Y chromosomes. It is a mental or emotional choice, possibly both. And depending on your upbringing, the choices you make in life will determine the outcome of many of your life's decisions. I mean, it is in our nature to be defiant, murderous, and confrontational about truth because it is a primal instinct. In addition, those who want to be strong, dominant, or weak, submissive males or females will associate themselves with that sex accordingly because humans will agreeably take a partner based on their strengths and weaknesses. It is a survival mechanism or a predatory trait found in humans. But is it possible that children raised in certain environments are the product of the environment? It is a well-known theory, surprisingly named the theory of environmental determinism. Environmental determinism, also known as climatic determinism or geographical determinism, is the study of how the physical environment predisposes societies and states towards particular development trajectories. Jared Diamond, Jeffrey Herbst, Ian Morris, and other social scientists sparked a revival of the theory during the late 20th and early 21st centuries. Many studies exist proposing the social ills of this and many countries. 
but most choose not to research and read about it because unfortunately, it interferes with their Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram time. We are just too busy to understand the need to learn, the excitement of discovering the truth about the world, or at least that part of the locality we reside. Too many distractions. That is why we are so readily able to accept purported truth, even when it's not truthful or inconsistent with reality. The same distractions leading to the explosion in the popularity of the transgender and homosexual LBGTQ movement. And this is one of my issues because I feel it's a mental illness that goes unchecked and it goes against the biological principles and the core principles of Christianity. I know, I know. I just defended several groups in this statement. But I don't care because it is my right to express my opinion and beliefs, especially after thoroughly researching and attempting to find invalidity of the information. Anyone who knows me, who has met me, knows my ideologies and can attest that I am not racist, bigot, or homophobic. However, I am a sledgehammer in the delivery of my opinions. I don't mince words. So go ahead and block me right now. Report me to Facebook police. You can't suppress my protected right to speech. And I'm not running for a political seat, so the need to appease one group over another is not my style. Now you're thinking, he's prejudiced. I'll end the argument right now. Yes, I am. I hate everybody. But I know I am so hoping, for argument's sake, my response helps you sleep at night. So if you agree I'm prejudiced, I will ask if anyone is interested in buying the Brooklyn Bridge I'm selling this month. This is a typical attack on me personally when I disagree with the so-called norm. And I won't argue with you because this is a rebuttal to context like this when there is disagreement. Moving on. What I find interesting is that transgender and homosexuality are similar in many ways, except that supporters of homosexuality maintained their sexual orientation and identity begins at birth. But the similarity can't be ignored. In fact, the American Psychiatric Association and the American Psychological Association have suggested for many years now that there is significant empirical evidence supporting the claim that homosexuality is a normal variant of human sexual orientation as opposed to a mental disorder. However, according to the Lincare Quarterly article by Robert L. Kenny III in November 2015, states that those medical associations have proposed that their homosexuality is normal claim is based on scientific evidence. This article critically reviews that scientific evidence and finds that much of their literature does not support the claim that homosexuality is normal. This article suggests that instead of supporting their claim with scientific evidence, those major medical associations arbitrarily label homosexuality as normal. So you see, there is no scientific evidence. It's just a method of predisposing the truth with arbitrary acceptance to avoid legal arguments and major disagreements with a group that has money and lobbyists to argue their fictitious claims. It is not a question of truth. It's a forced acceptance of choice. Trying to purvey, which is that people's sex is malleable, that people can move from male to female, and that it is my job, objectively, to now call them the name they wish to be called and to teach my children that men can be women and women can be men. I fundamentally disagree with that point. Now, with that said, is everybody in the United States entitled to the same rights? Of course. but. Your right does not extend to forcing me to call you what you want me to call you. That's not the way this works. That violates my freedom of speech. I propose both transgender and homosexuality is not a birth defect or a defective chromosome from the male or female species within the gene pool of the human race. 
but a psychological and learned sexual preference. A sexual orientation behavior learned because society, with its promiscuity and decadent behavior existing as far back as the Roman Empire, is a learned immoral behavior, tolerated by the empire, but not illegal. However, the homosexuals of that era were mocked and berated for being less manly. According to Robert D. Mattei, 63, the deputy head of the country's National Research Council, claimed that the empire was fatally weakened after conquering Carthage, which he described as a paradise for homosexuals. He went on to say, Today we live in an era in which the worst vices are inscribed in laws as human rights. Every evil must have its punishment, either in our times or in the afterlife. Politicians and academics were left aghast by his remark, and more than 7,000 have signed a petition calling for his immediate resignation. This is sad because Robert de Mattei is considered a whistleblower against the gay community. The reality concerning transgenderism and homosexuality is there is no specific or scientific proof of this mental illness acquired at birth. Both the potential for this behavior to be a mental disorder is strongly considered an alternative to the latter. But this information will be labeled as hate speech because it would confirm there is more mental illness in this country than is reported. Imagine the impact this information could have and would require the repeal of the science behind the claims this illness is a normal condition like heterosexuality. In addition, this new norm of acceptance weakens the moral fabric of society. From a biblical perspective, the addition of a third gender goes against the principles of the book of Genesis in which God created Adam and Eve, an abomination in the eyes of the Creator God. But of course, these religious and Christian principles are considered hate speech as well. Is it? Or is it societies, politicians, and special interest groups' means of suppressing the truth about the level of mental illness on a global scale? So what does this say about society in general? That we must be tolerant and restrain in the knowledge of the side effects of mental illness and indoctrinated into the education system as the new norm and create laws for this behavioral disorder as a new gender class? Like the H.R. 5 passed by the 117th Congress as the Equality Act, which in short prevents the discrimination of transgenders to use the opposite sex bathrooms, participate in gender specific sports, or organizations like the Boy Scouts of America. Would this bill prohibit, and they would dress together? Would it prohibit them from dressing together? No. Would this bill prohibit the boy with gender dysphoria from exposing his penis to the girls? I'm sorry, would it prohibit that? Yeah. No, I don't, I, I don't. Would this bill prohibit the girls from exposing their genitalia to the boy who identifies as a girl? I, I, I don't believe the bill um, addresses genitalia. Well, does it prohibit them from dressing together? No. Okay. Would this bill prohibit them from showering together? No. Okay. Our government has taken it upon itself through the efforts of the LBGTQ lobbyists to infuse this behavior, which undermines the order of nature and destroys the family unit in terms of husband and wife. It is a deflection from recognizing a defect within the morality of our society. And the government and other medical associations knowingly are contributing to the moral corruption of the country by implementing societal standards with laws to ignore the real issue here, that it's a mental disorder, whether you agree with me or not. Currently, these new societal standards have created heavy debate 
concerning pronoun usage or gender specific descriptions in our speech. I know there are two genders, male and female. I will continue to address you according to your gender because this is part of reality. The movement of transgenderism and homosexuality gender identification is meant to legitimize a sexual deviation within our society because feelings will be hurt. However, the truth is painful as well, but we don't create a class to protect those it can impact. What about homelessness? We avoid it when walking down the street or immediately rush away when one approaches asking for help. But some of the homeless have mental issues and our society has seen fit to ignore it because of the financial impact on government and medical institutions in the form of special or social programs. Homelessness is not a choice, but a situation a person can easily fall into with no lifeline, and I strongly feel transgenderism is the same. We ignore it, hoping the problem will go away. And it won't. But creating laws and acceptance only exacerbates the problem, a growing problem among our youth, and I dare say creates an environment in which the youth are falling into this cycle of self-identification. Like homelessness, we can't simply ignore it. We need to extend a helping hand and have those conversations, reinstall family values, and be understanding most importantly. Transgender people are not broken, just lost and confused in a world of confusion. In my conclusion, the actions of the LBGTQ movement have caused more harm and restrictions on American society. For example, Speaking against gender inequality is hate speech. Not permitting transgenders into bathrooms for specific genders like male or female is discrimination. Yet the harm caused and covered up in Loudoun County Public Schools is such an example of the forced indoctrination of this movement. Serious parents in Virginia calling for an entire school board to resign after allegedly trying to cover up sexual assault. You allow a student who is currently charged with sexually assaulting a girl to be quietly transferred to another school. What other crimes are you people hiding? Do you people even have a moral compass? Resign before you face a federal indictment. What about the intrusion into sports by genetically born males into female sports? We have become a broken society in which common sense is a luxury we can't afford to exercise. There is not much to be said other than we attempt to love one another regardless of our flaws. But there is a difference between tolerance and acceptance. But forced acceptance will not change or diminish the truth. We are not perfect creatures, but we are not stupid either. The existence of a third gender or gender neutrality is a hot issue. Not many politicians, if any, want to take on it in fear of being labeled a racist, bigot, homophobic, etc. Even the so-called religious leaders have gone against biblical doctrine to appease the gay and transgender community in fear of retaliation. And I know some parents deal with this issue on a personal level, but this is not an attack on your children or a vehicle to demand change in our society, but an acknowledgement of the truth can't be ignored. I will share this much with you. My daughter asked me once if I would love her less if she was gay. I said, no. You are a part of me. Although I wouldn't agree with your lifestyle choice or support your decision, I would continue to love you no matter what. I would only hope that if you have doubts, you would come to me because I'm not here to pass judgment, but to guide you to the right answers. And folks, I've never said it in my podcast, but the truth can be found in the Bible. Not in the halls of justice, or not even in the new progressive churches. God will speak to you when you read the Bible. So I'd like to end this podcast by saying, 
I love you children. I love your families. And don't give up. Wake up, America. Wake up.